Hello and welcome to the Habit Coach podcast. I am Ashton Doctor, your Habit Coach, and today with us we have Arjun Vaidya. Now, this is going to be a free-flowing conversation, understanding entrepreneurship, understanding sports, and picking up tidbits on how he got to where he is and what is he doing now. The last time we met, we had a fascinating discussion, and I was like, "This is what we need to do on the podcast." So this is why Arjun is here. Arjun, so we have to just like. replicate that same discussion again cookie cutter <laughs> like hi we're meeting after so long eh it's <laughs> right from there onwards <laughs> arjun welcome to the habit coach thank you thank you so much for having me this has been a long time in the making long time in the making but finally doing it finally doing this we started talking to each other during the lockdown yes at which point of time you were doing these insane daily lives wasn't it almost daily insta lives daily instagram lives and i was like if there's any way to think about consistency it's <laughs> to with these lives that you were doing but we had a great life then we had a fantastic life absolutely and i picked up one thing which i thought about this morning as well so i came back from doha last night probably reached home by 12:30 and I had kickboxing this morning and i was like i just don't want to do it don't want to do it and my coach was down 9 o'clock session i just like 9:15 i was like okay, i just have to get out of bed i have to get out of bed and then i remember what you said on that live you said Half the battle is won by tying your shoelaces. So I did that. I went down. I felt great. Right. Once I went down, I felt great. But the toughest part about that was not the workout. It was about mentally saying, "I want to get out of bed, not ask for five minutes extra, put on my clothes, and just go." It's the hardest once thing. Once I'm there, it it was fine, and yeah. I was amazing. I was performing well. But just to get there, my mind said so many times, "Okay, just tell him you're not feeling well. You came back late last night." Forget it. Do it another day. This, that, or that. But I did it, and I'm so happy I did it. Yeah, because otherwise you become masters at making excuses, right? Absolutely. Like, I thought of every single possible every excuse. <laughs> My wife is pregnant. I have to help her, uh, <laughs> even though she was asleep. <laughs> <laughs> So I I once had this person tell me you know Ashton I didn't go to my workout because I, my sh- my socks were not matching my outfit <laughs> those had gone for a wash I was like wow that is like the height of the <laughs> best excuse, excuse. <laughs> Arjun quickly tell the audience a little bit about yourself and then let's jump into all the other interesting things that we're going to talk about today Sure yeah so maybe quick context uh, into me my name is Arjun Vaidya Vaidya my last name means Ayurvedic doctor I have 150 years of Ayurveda legacy in the family Um, I grew up in Bombay. Went to college in the U.S. Saw a move towards natural organic products, and I saw yoga being repackaged. My grandfather was a doctor. He cured me of asthma, so I promised him I'll come and do something with his legacy of Ayurveda. 2016, quit my private equity finance job to take on my dad's legacy after he passed. In a new age way, I wanted to build a consumer brand that made Ayurveda appealing, accessible to modern consumers. So I started this company, took it online. Um, had a good run for a half year. Scaled from zero to five thousand orders a day. Reached two million transacting customers. Launched eighty products, but most importantly, reached sixteen and a half thousand pin codes across oh, wow. India. So, really built access for Ayurveda using the power of digital. We raised some money from R P Sanjeev Goenka Group, and then late last year, actually, they made an offer to buy the business. Um, and so we sold the business to them, being one of sort of India's first D two C exits. Um, and yeah, I, I think the The new avatar started since then. I now run a VC fund and pretty active early stage investor, but also really passionate about the consumer products, brands, enablement, e-commerce ecosystem. And so, other than my work as an investor, I do a lot to give back to the community as well. That's insane. Zero. Just put on uh, vibrating. Just put off vibration. You want to just keep it there? Huh. Perfect. It's better. Thank you. It'll be distracting in yours. So zero to um, selling in four years. Zero to selling in four years. Four and a half years. Four and a half years. So the question I wanted to ask you is, what was that moment after signing when you came back home? What were the emotions that were going through? Actually, that moment wasn't after signing, because um, signing is the end, right? Yeah. You make the decision well before you sign. There's lots of legal. Sort of compliance paperwork you do to sign, right? So, I think signing was not the the moment. Hmm. The moment was deciding to exit, um, which happened early December twenty, um, and then I executed and ran the business till end of December two thousand twenty, and I remember 
December 27th, 2020 was the last day I went to office. And from January, I was handing over the business, right? So I was maybe going in a little bit, but I was already in the mode of handing over, I was not running the business. So 27th December was the last day as boss. Was the last day, yeah. And and it was a beautiful day, actually. It was an amazing day. Um, it Just was after really, Christmas, it's, it's yeah, your it was, gift. It was really emotional. So um, I remember walking into the office that day. That was my last day. Everyone knew it was our last day. And, you know, I, you know, I love cricket. So from the elevator till my desk, until Trisha's desk, we had our entire team standing there and clapping for us as we walked into the office. You know, like a batsman who scored a century and he's walking back and he's holding his bat up. It, <laughs> it felt a little bit like that. And the day went on, honestly, on the last day, like you can't do so much work, you're just wrapping up things. But I think three things stood out for me that day, which were, you know, it, it was a really strange but special day. Number one, four and a half years I spent on that in that office. It took me two hours to pack up my stuff. Mm. So that process of packing up my stuff, I mentally built up as, oh my God, I'm going to pack up my bags, I'm going to pack up my stuff. But it took me two hours to literally pack four and a half years into two boxes and leave. Wow. So that was one. Number two, we we after everybody left, I called my parents, Trisha's parents, our siblings to the office and we had pizza and we just sat there and just took in the last few moments. That was a beautiful moment, I thought. Saying goodbye to the team, cutting a cake, all of that. It's pretty normal. And then I remember distinctly the car journey back home. So walking out of the office, I remember touching the floor one last time and then the car journey, like walking down the stairs, getting into my car and then the 15-minute car journey back home just thinking to myself, dude, that's it. It's done. Like, all that stress, the highs, the lows, the emotion, all of that, it's done. But my dad said one very important th thing to me at that time. He said, very few people in their life have the opportunity to really pause. Mm. Holidays, breaks, vacations, those are momentary, right? But you're not pausing properly. You're pausing for like a short fleeting moment and then getting back to it. Here you have the opportunity at the age of 29 to pause, look back, reflect, decide and move forward. Nice. Nobody has that or very few people. He said, I'm 55, 56 years old at that time. Never paused in my life. Mm -hmm. So use this time really wisely. Next morning we took a flight to um, Gangtok and mm -hmm. we spent New Year's there and then, then that began began the sort of New journey, new avatar. But I think that day was that day was strange, special, unique, and, and sort of set up the next next phase. I think that's such an important aspect, right? Because, you know, I've had uh, people who've climbed Everest on the podcast. And when I asked them, so how did it feel? He said, it's a very strange feeling because you've achieved something. But in your mind, it's a now what next thought that comes up. Yeah, I... I, I I would say now what next took a little bit of time to come up. Uh, but it was always like, okay, what's next? What's next? What's next? But I think there was a huge weight that just left my body. Hmm. Um, it's difficult to explain, but I just felt light right. for that period of time. And I think that heaviness, stress um, of being an entrepreneur hasn't come back yet. I still feel much lighter. <laughs> Although I'm now <laughs> occupied the whole day. But just that burden yeah. that was on me constantly as an entrepreneur, I just, just like suddenly went away. What is the burden like? Like what is the feeling of being an entrepreneur over those years? So uh, that burden is the burden that Sachin had while playing for India, right? That burden is that hey, when Sachin went out to play in the 90s, when when he got out, everyone shut the TV. Hmm. So the buck stopped at him. As an entrepreneur, the buck stops at you and the buck of a lot of people stops at you. Your team, their families, your vendors, your suppliers, your partners, your investors. All of these people are dependent on you to perform every single day. Like I remember going to the office once on a Saturday. Friday night was a friend's wedding and so I was out there late and I went on a Saturday and I was just not able to work but I was like I have no option like let me just eat something 
go for a walk downstairs and get back and get going because if i don't do something today and i just chill today there's a lot of people dependent on me doing something today that will that will struggle right so i think that that's a big burden you wake up every morning with emails whatsapps things broken things that need to be fixed um and so you know when entrepreneurs tell me hey i actually can't have such a routine schedule at an early stage look if you're a late stage company your unicorn etc the world is very different right your position in the business is also very different but if you're an operator who's operating on a daily basis it's tough mm-hmm. it's very tough so why would somebody want to become an entrepreneur then because the joy of creating is like nothing else okay. right so think about it i was in this office trying to take forward this dream of my grandfather's legacy and the first two years pretty much hitting my head against a wall not getting anything done but dreaming that one day i'll be at 50 orders a day and then dreaming that i'll be at 100 and at 100 orders a day i'll have like 30 people in my team and then i got 30 people in my team and then i was like i'm going to have a you know like how i see other big founders do it i'm going to have a christmas party for my team just before the end of the year there's going to be 120 people there and we had that christmas party at willingdon club there were 120 people there i'm going to get to a point where i have more than one office and we had seven offices going to get to a point where my brand is known and then i went to the airport and the guy sitting next to me was like hey are you are you from dr vedias do you guys make this product i want this product you you dream about being recognized and then you get recognized in all of these lists and all of these awards and jeff bezos gave me an award and all of the stuff you dream and then you're living your dream right you dream that you're going to go to the office and you're going to open your laptop read your email and there's going to be so many orders on your screen that you can't read your email and that happens mm-hmm. and you have to make a folder for the orders because earlier i'd be like i want to see every single order go through and then i'm like i cannot read my email if i see every single order go through so i think that feeling of creation of launching products of products becoming bigger than you um of ideas working out of hypotheses working out of people believing in you and your journey and your vision people talking about you people saying that you've created something special that feeling is like nothing else the joy of creation when i said 16500 pin codes i still felt goosebumps because we reach 60% of india and you know how difficult it is to establish distribution in 60% of india that that's a dream that you dream and then eventually you get to live right yeah, so it's very few companies that can actually do something like that a handful it used to be the big mncs that well, used to have and, and i think i i'm not saying that i am I have done something crazy to be able to reach there because lots of consumer brands reached there. But I'm saying that that was my dream. Yeah, that was what my grandfather would have loved to see. Like, I remember one special moment. My grandmom, so I, we got an award at Amazon somehow in the first time they did it in Jan 20, and Jeff Bezos had come down to India. This was pre-COVID, so he'd actually come down to India, and they awarded ten brands. Then they awarded Dr. Vedya's Youth SMB of the Year, and Jeff Bezos gave me the award. And I came back to Bombay and I showed it to my grandmom. and she just looked at me she smiled and she said wherever he is your grandfather would have been proud of wow. you wow that feeling right that's that's unparalleled to be honest i can imagine it's it's that what you're building for exactly and so so all of those down times those times when you're like why always me why is it just not working out for me when you're the last one to show up at every family function or wedding people stop talking to you because you're always late they think you don't care about them um you lose a lot of friends i think all of that is worth it for what we were able to create right like i remember a lot of people saying dude you're always late but this makes sense in hindsight when it was happening at that oh, point yeah, of it's, time it's what did it, it feel like like it, people stop talking to you are you it questioning it didn't feel great and i don't blame them right because if you're not an entrepreneur you don't understand it right yeah. so i i don't blame them and look i think Eventually, I said once I sold my company, I'm going to be the first one at every party. By the way, I'll reach before the host, right? <laughs> to make up for all those four and a half years that I was late everywhere, <laughs> and people forget and things change and and goes back to normal, right? But, but I think it was all worth it. It was absolutely all worth it. I think it makes a big difference when you when your mindset is for creation, when your mindset is something greater than. But it's a weird feeling. I'll tell you why, right? Because you're making all these sacrifices. without a surety that you'll achieve success mm-hmm. like there was no time in 2017 or 2018 that i was like oh i'm going to definitely hit other park no nah, i'm but killing still, this and but you're still taking these sacrifices so the feeling is very weird when you're not achieving right it's like 
you worked for 13 hours a day and your company did zero sales that day you worked your ass off and nothing happened right that's really tough that's really really tough and you know that feeling that emotion that like i'm totally worthless or useless and i'm not getting anything done um that's something i felt and i felt that not not everyone understands that feeling and so when i exited my business i was clear that that's something i want to help entrepreneurs with so give my time pro bono to entrepreneurs 6 hours a week teach this cohort based course i have a podcast do all of those things to at least bridge that ecosystem support gap because these are very complex feelings and if you've not been through the journey you can't feel it absolutely you can't understand it but what do you do when you feel like that like i know people might be feeling something like this in their life what what are the things that you did at that point of time to get out of that feeling look i think a very strong support system is important for mm-hmm. an entrepreneur it could be friends it could be partner it could be spouse it could be family for me it was i had my partner in the business with me but family mm-hmm. they understood right because my dad's an entrepreneur as well they understood what what you're going through the stress the emotion the angst the anxiety i mean go, i've gone through all of it right and I'm, and i'm and you probably seen him go through it as well yeah 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 but he's be- he was better at dealing with it because i i saw him deal with it or understood him deal with it when he was much older hmm. feel like arjun where they are 26 was is very different from arjun where they are 29 is very different from arjun where they are 31 right um uh, i don't panic as much as i used to i remember the first time the wrong mrp was printed on my product i freaked out now our business was only online selling in a clinic and so we had all the stock with us and so the solution to that problem was send back to the factory redo the labeling of the batch and bring it back right hmm. but i panicked i freaked out i called my dad i was like this happened i can't believe this happened he's like dude hold on relax all the stock is with you it's not gone to any customers just relabel it and send it back what's the big deal right and i think that that's something that you learn along the way you get better at it you get more mature once you see something the second time or the third time you're like okay i've seen this before <laughs> um and so when founders tell me hey like i had this issue this thing broke that thing broke now i view it with much more calmness but i still understand their stress anxiety and emotion right have you ever had something that was so mission critical that went wrong like for example these are things that you could connect or correct like yeah yeah, yeah like, i had like something shit properly hit the fan Yeah so th- this was uh I would say December 2017 yeah December 2017 uh in Gujarati we have that kankotri writing ceremony for our wedding so wedding was Feb 2018 so December 2018 we had this puja at home 50 60 people from the family um the puja starting and my factory manager calls me three times mm. Don't like, say keep your phone away. It's your wedding, like you're preparing for a wedding, and had I had taken a half day off on a work day, oh. so I was already pissed. <laughs> I just hate, I hate taking off. Like even now when I work as an investor, I don't take time off. I mm. just, I just don't like taking time off. Mm. So I was already in a bad mood that I taken time off, and people had come late, and I was like, come on, let's start the puja. I need to be back at the office by three p.m. <laughs> and he told me um hey by the way we've lost electricity at the factory mm. uh because we don't have this one pollution license which i honestly didn't know anything about and so we can't do production for the next few days until we get that pollution license and go through the whole thing now i freaked out but you have to sit through the puja mm. and you can't do anything about it that was probably the toughest time i went through sit through one and a half hours eat lunch smile at people and inside you're burning saying what am i going to do about this now you know to deal with it i couldn't deal with it then i'll hmm. be honest i don't know if i'll be able to deal with something like that now but it was tough that was really hard but like now with age wisdom would have come in i don't what know would, I what d- would this i i, I think <laughs> i got better huh Look people I I preach right I say you, as an entrepreneur you have to have thick skin grit resilience deal with failures I I preach all of these things right I'm still a 5 or 6 on 10 at dealing with failure mm. which is better than being a 2 or 3 or 10 when I started 
um and so you get better but 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 i'm not i'm not there yet i i can keep getting better right i think so like the way that for example hardcore entrepreneurs dad your dad nothing phases them right exactly they've seen so much we not had any sales in two months no worry sales will happen been Life through the cycles go, right cash flow we don't have any money don't worry money will happen we are panicking accountant is panicking they are like cool cutlets yeah and, and i think that i think that um, that comes um but it's a it's a process that keeps iterating and you keep improving but it's gradual like i saw that with with myself as well as issues came along um i got marginally better at dealing with them but it's that like you get 1% better every time you do it so over a period of time you can get you have to have lots of mistakes in order to become better but that's every day yeah. that's every single day uh dude how do you deal with the firefighting like for example like i'm doing your d2c course right now yeah. right and i'm and you seeing, see i'm you seeing see everyone's happening, right? having like so many issues and it's a my constant my facebook account is banned my my packaging supplier didn't give me s- packaging in time my products not made in time uh, but but look i think i think one thing i heard a founder say once he said if i go to sell something to someone and they say yes the first time there's something wrong <laughs> <laughs> like i cannot get success so easy right and i think for me in life all through you know growing up as well i was a kid who had a hand eye coordination problem I loved sports but I had an had a hand eye coordination problem. Suffered from asthma. Um because I had a hand eye coordination problem, I wasn't good at sports, I had to be good at academics. <laughs> but I can't read. I went through my entire school life, studied international relations including politics, history, sociology in college. I have not read a book cover to cover since Charlie and the Chocolate Factory. Um and if i have to read a book cover to cover it takes me ages i have a concentration problem hmm. so going through all this i realize like if i have to get should through, i send you an audio book of this instead right now i i will get through it but it will take me so long that by the time i meet you 8 months later i've got through the book okay. right hmm. and so i realized very early on that i'll have to work much harder than everybody else there are those smart workers and there are those hard workers and you can't change the way you've been built and so that that's life for me i, I remember because i couldn't play cricket because of the dust in the cricket field in my asthma i used to play squash when i was a kid and i was the earliest on the squash scene mm. at age 5 or 6 <laughs> i was playing squash so by the time i was like 10 12 i'd put in like 4 5 years in the sport right and people would come and they'd start playing and in 6 months they'd beat me mm. like i'd start by like crushing these people right because they'd not be the sport and in 6 months they'd beat me And that was tough. So hard to deal with. I'm like, what am I doing on this court for five years, six years, and and not getting it? So I, I think that I was trained mentally that it's not going to come easy, and you got to put much more effort than anybody else. Hmm. So you become okay with effort. I'm okay with effort. I I put in more effort than anyone else in anything I do, and I am totally fine. Nothing comes easy, and that's fine. Let's understand this aspect a little bit more because um, I was just having a discussion with somebody else on the podcast, and they were talking about how nowadays effort is seen as something bad. If you're t- putting too much effort, means something's wrong with you. Actually, effort is what is needed for success. No, look, I, I think if you look at there was that famous India cricket win in two thousand three Natwest series, right? And we were down and out and. Five wickets down. I had turned on the turned off the TV as well. We had to chase something like three hundred, and then these two young lads, Yuvraj Singh and KF, won us the match. And that's like the time when Saurav Ganguly took off his T-shirt on the balcony, and he was like waving his shirt and all that stuff, right, to win that Natwest series. Those two batsmen are exactly what I'm going to tell you now. Yuvraj Singh. probably one of the most talented naturally talented gifted cricketers ever and he lived his life as a naturally talented gifted cricketer he didn't have to go and practice 12 15 hours a day because when he hit the ball it stayed hit hmm. and the other guy mohammad kaif if you watched him bat it wasn't pleasing to the eyes he was always fidgeting his technique was really bad when the ball was moving you could see it was so tough for him but he did so well for india as well right and there are the kaifs 
the Pujaras, the Dravids of the world, that are not as talented as the Sachins and the Sehwags and the Yuvrajas of the world. But you find your way. And you have to find your way. And, and if you look at the corollary to, to us living our lives, right? I have accepted that nothing comes easy. I may not be the most naturally talented, gifted person. But I know that I've trained myself that if I have to put in the effort, I can put in more effort than you. So, for example, even football, right? I tried out for my school football team every year from 3rd to 10th grade. I didn't make it even once, mm. the school football team. Not even once. Started playing football. I love the sport though. I just love the sport. Right? But the good part about US education is you can play at any level and you will find people to play with you. So we used to play this intramural soccer like internally among students and we used to play the mid-level. Mm. And I had all these friends of mine who were really good. And I was okay, you know. But I, I, I'm a runner. And so... Uh, I knew one thing that for the 60 minutes or 40 minutes or whatever it played I could stay on the field and have gas for this entire 40 minutes and so I started getting better and better at football and then I moved back to Bombay and, and football had just started these turfs started coming up and stuff and so I started playing in Bombay and then they became one and a half hour games right and they were not competitive games anymore they were like you play two times a week three times a week and I just kept going kept playing, kept going, kept playing and and I couldn't do all those tricks and stunts and all of those sort of... The fancy stuff. Fancy moves, those sleek moves, I couldn't do any of those. But what I could do was stay on the field for one and a half hours, not get substituted and have gas, so much gas that I could go for a jog after I played, right? And so 30 minutes into the game, 40 minutes into the game when everyone is dead and exhausted, I have gas mm. and I can keep going, right? And so... I found my my way to do it and I, I couldn't play a striker and that was fine. I played as a defender but I found my way to do it and for me that, I mean, it's a guilty pleasure but the joy of eventually being better than those guys who made the school football team that I didn't was, was bittersweet at the end. Yeah, they're panting on the ground. You're yeah, like doing yeah. jumping jacks saying, come yeah. on guys, come get on, out. Keep going, <laughs> yelling at them saying, come on, you got to run, man. What's going on? <laughs> So that's the thing. Also, like um, Warren Buffett once said, right? Like uh, somebody asked him, what is the secret to your, you know, riches and stuff like that? He says, just don't die. Right? Just don't die. Just don't die. <laughs> it's like, I've just not died. That's why I've, I've been able to stay. And if you think about it for an entrepreneur as well, right? A um, lot of people talk about luck. I actually believe there is nothing called luck. Why? Because people say, hey man, you were the right place at the right time. COVID happened. Ayurveda boomed. You were online, you were market leader, etc. I was like, boss, it took three and a half years for me to show up every day to make that luck, right? So I'm a very strong believer in consistency and showing up every day. And that moment of luck or that, I, I wouldn't even call it moment of luck, opportunity will come. But if you're not there to grab that opportunity, then you're not going to get the opportunity, right? So consistency, hard work, showing up every day with the same effort, whether it's good or bad, Gives you time to grab that opportunity. Mm. That opportunity may come in the first year, second year, third year, fourth year, fifth year. You don't know when it'll come. Right? But when it comes, you have to grab it. Are you ready at that point of time? Are you there? Are you there? Forget ready. Are you there? In fact, um, just two days ago, I wrote my acknowledgement for the book. So in the books, you have this page called the acknowledgement. Sure. Who, have, who has helped you, etc. And I was at, one of the paragraphs was, I'm acknowledging the serendipity of life. And the opportunities it gives you. Because the book was designed in that way. I wrote the book, thought I'd self-publish. And by chance, I met the publisher. And they said, hey, we've been asking you to write a book for us. We, we've been wanting to ask you to write a book for us. I said, like, book is written. Tell me when you want to publish. <laughs> right? So it is that effort that suddenly materialized when a question was raised. Same way. How did we meet? I we said, met because I was doing an Instagram live series and I came across your content on habits we got you on the show and that's how we met that's how right? we met right you have to put in all of that and then opportunity comes take it with both hands I think that's the critical someone thing. asked me why do you keep posting on LinkedIn hmm. why do you you're such a busy guy how do you take out the time hmm. I was like look you should be saying I'm searching for a job <laughs> no no I was like look the people who bought my company they found me on LinkedIn and reached out to me through a cold DM on LinkedIn. Oh, wow, really? And then eventually bought my company, right? Now, the relationship started on LinkedIn, took a lot of work to get there, but that, if it wasn't for that DM, how would you go? You wouldn't have had that relationship, right? Similarly, the fund 
that i run today i got connected to the folks at volin west through a cold dm and linkedin hmm. so why would i not <laughs> right you have to be there you have to, to be, be noticed you have to be there absolutely lots of people say that you, know, you said i i believe in hard work showing up every day all those hours etc people say but then when are you enjoying life right lots of people i'm sure must be telling you the same thing what answer would you give people like that so like i don't enjoy life i today even though i work 12 hours a day i work out every morning for an hour i go for a run a long run on weekends 10 12 kilometers i spend time with my family i have my own podcast i teach a course which i enjoy doing um i play sport i watch sport i've watched almost every single game of this world cup i'm having fun hmm. i went to qatar for the weekend watched the world cup i think it honestly i think what what you have to train yourself to do is that while i was running my business if i saw friends on a summer vacation in mykonos and i'm sitting in my office on my laptop trying to close a deal it's okay right i i wouldn't feel fomo as such and when you have the opportunity you go and enjoy it it's and the hardest thing right not feeling fomo at that point of time you feel oh, I'm, oh, look i'm human right so you feel but your time will also come hmm. and so when we sold our business then we had all the time in the world to do that and more right it's about context that person has done something to deserve that break you have to do do something to deserve your break or get your break or it may not happen right in covid while everybody was stuck at home and enjoying the first month spending time with family and friends i was in office every day in the warehouse packing orders i was not complaining about it when i was lifting 10 kg boxes and unloading a 750 kilo truck while everyone was doing what is that house party calls and those Delgona virtual coffees. games and hmm. yeah daglona coffees and all of that i was i was i was in the office and i was fine hmm. i was okay because what i was doing then would create much more value than any of those things right so i missed out on a few things and that's fine so this is the whole concept of delayed gratification right like as entrepreneurs is something that we constantly talk about a where did you learn it b how would you explain it to somebody uh oh, to be honest i learned it because the first few years were so hard that i was like okay there is none of this anyway so let's just keep zero sales are zero sales hopefully in future <laughs> just keep keep chugging along and see what happens <laughs> oh but how would i explain to someone I, i would say that look for anything in life that you really want you got to put in the effort to get it and and that's how that's how it is um but i am a proponent of of taking time off taking breaks getting that sort of time to refresh recharge um as an entrepreneur you may not get the 7 day beach holiday hmm. you may get 2 day breaks 1 day breaks a trek on a sunday value that cherish it and use it don't feel like oh i want to go to the us and do a east to west drive over a 14 day period you may not get that i never got that i didn't take the max break i took was 4 days off while i was running doctor vedas and that was terrible absolutely terrible why i didn't enjoy it i was on my laptop a lot of the time i was stressed the whole time i just hated the trip so we decided we'll take at max weekends plus friday monday because you take the entire week off like it doesn't doesn't you don't enjoy it Right. Why were you so busy running Dr. Vedas? Was there not a system that you could have put in place to I take think over the work? I think we made a mistake. Work? We made a big mistake under indexing on team. The reason we made the mistake is we didn't have the experience uh, and also we didn't have the funds hmm. to be honest, right? That that's reality. If I were to do it all over again, I would hire a much stronger empowered team early on. But you have your journey to make your mistakes to learn and then and No, you had to get your hands dirty for sure to figure all of this out. We got our hands too dirty. <laughs> if I'm honest, right. Uh, we did and that's fine because at 25 26 that's you don't know any better, right? But getting your hands dirty and learning the amount of things that we learned. I can run Facebook ads if I want. Trisha can make an invoice on tally. She's not an accountant or a CA. Hmm. We didn't have anyone to do it at times so we do it ourselves. When we get an order for our products, let's say a hangover product from a wedding planner on a Sunday and they said, "Can you deliver it in 3 hours?" we leave that family lunch walk up the stairs because the lift didn't work in our office building on a sunday open the warehouse take out the packets trisha would create the invoice and we drive and deliver to wherever that wedding planner was to get that sale now context 
that sale was probably 60 rupees into 300 18000 rupees so maybe it was actually not worth it for me to do all of that but we did hmm. yeah and i think it shows in for example in your cohorts when you're talking about and people are lobbing questions at trisha like was happening the other day <laughs> she's like oh like a champ oh this is the yeah uh, oh this we've done oh this is you this we've done because you all have done you do it everything yourself. yeah you've yeah. done everything yourself and i think as a founder right if you think about business as well and you think about life you don't have to do everything yourself but you have to know how to do everything mm. so nobody can take you for a ride correct so when lots of founders say hey like my agency sucks and they don't give me the roi etc i'm like what are you asking them for you're asking them for the roi they're not giving you the roi but can you read the ads can you go to the back end of the ads and read what they're doing and figure out whether it's right or wrong you fire them and say get better they don't know how to get better you don't know how they can get better you can't advise them on use this creative this product is doing better this is wrong the way you're portraying this product if you can't do that you if you can't say the audience is wrong then are you going to lead them in the right direction no hmm. absolutely you're not putting in the effort in learning because i'm guessing learning is such an important part of this entire journey right like how much time do you spend on i remember to understand the amazon algorithm <laughs> i once asked one of my colleagues to print out the top 5000 skews hmm. in fmcg on amazon and i read each and every name number of reviews studied those 5000 skews to understand what's working and what's not 5000 line item excel read every single one of them initially we were trying to do export set we had no contacts no leads so i pulled out the export data you can buy the data right uh, at the port all the export data for hsn code means every ayurvedic export from bombay port hmm. let's say for example and they give you the name of the importer in the various countries i went through that list of some one and a half thousand names from that found the n- contact details of 300 of those importers wrote all of them hmm. from fiji to hong kong to london to the caribbean to the us to south africa wrote to all of these people and, and, and you did this I wrote them. you didn't and hire somebody and to I write this and so clearly like my eyes are shutting it's 1:30 am i'm going through this list trying to find their contacts most of them don't have websites some of them have email addresses some of them don't it's not an amazing experience trying to personalize each of them ah but that their software so i i learned a software <laughs> called mail merge at that time <laughs> now there's much better things but that that first i should do it without a software and then i was like this is so bloody inefficient mm. so inefficient crazy yeah absolutely now it's so much easier to get all of this in place what are three things that you would probably do differently if you started now uh i i would say the first one is i i should have realized early on that i couldn't have done it alone and so hire a more empowered team and get the right people to help you in the journey because if you don't have an empowered team compounding doesn't happen right trisha and arjun putting in 12 hours a day because i genuinely believe more than 12 hours a day you can't work efficiently in a long period let's say you got to put in 14 hours one day two days it's okay if there's something special happening but on a consistent basis if you work more than 12 13 hours on a on a daily basis for 200 days a year it's it, it it's not going to work you're going to lose efficiency so if you're working 12 hours a day into two people that's 24 hours of quality work but if eight people are working 10 hours a day or six people are working 8 hours a day the compounding is much more right so i think hiring a better team number two i didn't invest in brand early enough because performance marketing was just chal raha tha to we used to just keep it going right but after a while we realized that people don't know doctor whether they just know that this okay i went on facebook i saw this ad and so the brand didn't get built early enough it should have eventually the brand got built and it's a very strong brand but it didn't get built early enough and uh the last thing i would say is i made a lot of decisions early on out of fear and so you are sitting on the fence with these decisions mm. this is the worst kind of decision give me an example for example you pay to sponsor an event but you don't take a proper sponsorship where you get branding visibility etc all of that so there's two packages the 3 lakh package where you get the branding visibility the shout out on stage you can go and talk etc all of that or you pay 1 lakh rupees and you get put at the bar and in the gift boxes hmm. nobody remembers you but i i would always pay the 1 lakh rupees early on saying are 3 lakhs too much let's do the 1 lakhs maybe scared this that so and, and i don't blame myself at 25 26 like no context never done business before it, i was thinking a lot of decisions about fear but decisions out of fear actually are worse than taking the then they're not doing it at all mm. right 
because you're just half there. My dad used to keep saying you're slightly pregnant with all your decisions. That's not the way to be. Either in or out, take your call. And did did dad's wise words work at that point of time? I or? hated hearing it. To be honest, <laughs> I just absolutely hated hearing it. And I would argue with him all the time to his face, but I'd go back and I'd reflect, and he was right. And he knows that that I didn't want to hear it, and I hated hearing it. But then I'd go back and I'd I'd add action it. It's not easy to hear, right? No, obviously. But but there is there is wisdom, and so. And the worst thing is coming from your dad. You don't want that. You don't like if you had a mentor it, right? or something you don't like, hear it. like like a. Um, so he would say like when other people tell you stuff about your business and they say it to you. uh without any sugar coating you're okay but when i said you have i have to think twice walk on eggshells before i talk to you it's not easy not easy but i had the i had the foresight to reflect on it hmm. and value the experience and, and i worked out yeah at that point of time is terrible to hear i don't like it but that night or in the shower the next day you're thinking about it for sure was he right hmm. so you have a podcast where you interview some of the biggest entrepreneurs right What are some of the learnings that you've had through those conversations? So many. Hmm. It's been like more than thirty-five of them, and all T to C consumer. Brands. Tell us about the podcast, and then you can. The podcast is called Direct to a Billion Consumers. The reason I started is because I had no context into what I was going to go through when I started my business. It's specifically for consumer brands and e-commerce brands, uh, and I was like, I didn't know half of these things when I started. So someone saying to me, they should know all of this before they start. That's why I teach the course. That's why I do the podcast. That's why I do all of these things, and now we're. launching a version of the course in hindi as well to democratize the learning right because i didn't have any of this learning and now that i have it i should give it to everybody else right what have i learned from this i've learned so many things from so many diverse experiences but if i would like just pull out the the most critical ones nobody hits a home run on day 1 and when you think they've hit a home run on day 1 Once you go back in the story, you'll realize that they've also hit their heads against the wall for two, five, seven years before they've hit that home run. And so, seemingly, what's in the press, looking like a home run, has had a lot of effort, time, energy, failure into it. Second thing, actually, all of us have those near-death experiences as founders, right? When it's it's all it's almost going to end, and so you're not alone in that experience, right? It was almost over, and then it turned around, mm. right? And the third thing. i would say is that what seemed implausible 5 years ago in terms of the number of brands the availability of brands the appetite for consumption the niches being developed it's very clear that there is still so much more scope india is a brand star nation consumers want more and more and and so when people say hey isn't consumer brand consumer d2c saturated like It's 1.4 billion people in this country. Every market in our country, given the number of people who are available to do business and the number of consumers, will get saturated when someone's doing well. If you look at Ayurveda today online, there are so many brands that have come up after Doctor Vedya has exited or after people heard the Doctor Vedya success story. But you got to do it right. If you do it right, you'll win. Right? There are there were many Facebooks before Facebook, many Googles before Google, and many Apples before Apple. But Apple is Apple, Facebook is Facebook, and Google is Google for a reason, right? Yeah. In fact, somebody keeps saying that you know the the market's getting saturated. There's so many similar companies coming, or so many similar products, right? And the thing is that there's always a market if you know how to tackle, segment yourself. To tackle. Absolutely. Absolutely. So, when so these are some of the learnings that you had from meeting with entrepreneurs. What are the learnings that you got from? So watching sports because i know this is the other passion right entrepreneurship and sports are your two things in life yeah so what are some of the learnings that you've had in sports that have guided you so in life so many so many learnings look i think the great the great thing about sport actually is it's a leveler right so there's very few places in the world where you're actually once you're on that field everybody's equal and then on that day morocco can beat portugal because they played better on that day right and that's what we've seen happen was unthinkable an african nation in the semi finals and i'm rooting for them and i'm so excited for them so i think it's it's a great level but i think the other thing about sport is other than restaurants it's the most naked business ever right because the whole world is seeing you fail right 
80,000 people in that stadium. In that plus stadium, everyone at home. You fail, and plus those like 500 million people watching you on TV, <laughs> all seeing you fail, you're scrutinized, right? So I think from all of that, you learn. If they're dealing with failure and they're doing the interview at the end of the game, and England is knocked out of the World Cup, and I saw Harry Maguire at a restaurant with his family, and I took a photo with him, and he seemed like okay, you know what? I went through it. It was bad. I cried after the game, but life moves on, right? So I think life moves on is one thing I heard or learned. Second thing I learned is hard work. You gotta get better, and you only get better by putting in the hours. So I think it was like. You only acquire a skill if you put ten thousand hours of work into that skill, and I see the best sportsman in the world just at whatever age and whatever level still putting in the hours. Right, Virat Kohli is the perfect example of this. Doing well, doing badly, just effort, effort happening all the time. Um, the third thing is mentality. Um, from people like Jordan, Ronaldo, Sachin, it's that. ruthless hunger to keep winning and to do what you have to to make it happen right and if it means against all odds if it means standing against the world but that clear horse with blinders side to that goal and getting there i think that's an amazing learning from sport and i would say the last thing is team work i love team sport um I love cricket and I love football because they're team sports. And you see the best teams in history, right? They may have one hero player, but they will not win if the rest of the team doesn't perform. Mm. If you look at the best Mumbai Indians teams, Rohit Sharma has performed, Hardik Pandya has performed, Krunal Pandya has performed, Surya Kumar Yadav has performed, Trent Bolt has performed, Mitch Baglani has performed, Kiran Paul, all of them have performed. So if they've won twelve games that season or ten games that season, each game would have a different match winner, and that ability to nurture the rest, even if you're the hero in the team, even if you're the entrepreneur, the founder, to nurture the rest of the people to do what they're best at and get the best out of them, that's critical. So I think these are the few learnings from sport. I learn from sport every day, right? Like I wrote a LinkedIn post recently about um, the Portugal Switzerland game. Where the manager Fernando Santos actually had the guts to bench Cristiano Ronaldo, the arguably the best footballer ever, to play a 21-year-old kid called Gonzalo Ramos, who I did not even hear of. Honestly, I hadn't even heard of him. Then I did some research and found out he's the top scorer in the Portuguese league right now, playing for Benfica and all of that. He took that decision. If you get that wrong, you are the biggest villain in Portugal. Yeah. Now his decision worked out. That kid scored a hat trick. Portugal won six one. They made it to the quarters where they lost to Morocco. But he had the guts to take that call, and if it went wrong, he had the guts to say I was wrong, or I took that call for these reasons. Maybe it didn't work out, but that's what happens on the day. You have to be able to own up to your decisions. Mm. Taking those tough calls, knowing that this is mine, and and I think what I what I because Portugal lost to South Korea the game before, right? And so I learned a few things. I learned one. Sometimes you got to go all in. You got to accept the consequences. And sometimes the shakeup is important. Mm. The shakeup to get the team back is also important, right? So so many, you know, daily basis you learn, right? You learn, you see the people who have come from literally the humblest backgrounds, who didn't have enough food to eat, who travel three hours to get to a stadium, and them excelling and them achieving. And you're thinking to yourself, like, really, like, why am I not? Why am I not being able to do this? Right? Yeah. You hear so many beautiful stories in the IPL. Every year you have someone who's gone through so much personal strife and made it, and and their life gets made. And those stories inspire. I think the beauty beauty of them being on a stage is that you can see them and say, "If they can, I can." If they can, I can. Right? That if they can, I can is such an important aspect. Like the Habit Coach podcast started like that. It was like, if I can do this, you can do this. Right? It's so easy. Come on, let's do this together. Right, it's all of that. This, if they can do it, what is it that I need to do in order to be able? Absolutely, absolutely. Yeah. Okay. Last question: What's happening in your life now? Where are you headed? Actually, what's happening? So, so I think I I talked to you about this, right? I am. If you ask me where I see myself in five years, I will not give you an answer. Hmm. For me, life is about the next hundred days. 
um and 1800 day sprints make 5 years so i don't look at 5 years from now had i looked at 5 years from now i would have never believed i'd be sitting with you right now talking about these things right so i think for me next 100 days um new year setting goals for my work for the fund for all of those things we're going to do it sort of towards the end of this week and and plan what's there ahead i have some fitness goals for myself um which i which i want to get started on um i have some um other sort of outside of work goals that i've set for myself but most importantly um a new beginning with family as well so by 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 january i will i'll be a father and i think that's a that's a new exciting phase of life that i'm nervous excited anxious and so happy to 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 embark on baby number 2 Maybe number one. No, after the after, after doctor, after yes. after doctor. But I, but I, but I've heard that it's a, it's a crazily different experience. <laughs> different kinds of sleepless nights. Yeah, hmm. yeah, yeah. So, so that's a that's a exciting new journey ahead, and and I think I'm I'm just uh, thankful to be at the phase in life that I am right now to be able to enjoy it because two years ago I would be a different person, crazy um, going through different things. How would you do your goal planning for the next year? quickly if you can like do you have a particular I format a, that you do yeah yeah so i am a guy who believes in quantifiable goals huh. if you set these um i will be rich huh. random ones set these i will be fit hmm. i will get fitter i will be better at work i will do this i will do that right so I, i'll i'll give you examples of the goals i set right so from the fund i want to do six deals hmm. next year now I set myself a target of doing six deals. I'll do each deal on the merit. Maybe I'll do seven. Maybe I'll do five. But I want to tell myself I have to do six. Let's say, for example, with with my content on LinkedIn, I'll set a goal for myself. I want to write four times a week, every week, right? With my fitness, I want to work out five days a week for as many weeks as I can. If I'm traveling, if I'm not able to do it tomorrow, I have a six forty five a.m. flight to Hyderabad. I can't go for a run at four a.m. It's not going to happen for me. So I would set quantifiable goals for myself, and I'd hold myself accountable to those every month. Okay. And see where I end up. Let's see. For example, I tell myself. But how many goals will you end up with? So will you have twenty-five goals? Will you have five goals that you'll focus on? Will you have ten goals that you'll focus on? In each aspect of my life, hmm. I will set three, four, five goals. Right. So there'll be work. Hmm. There'll be passions outside of work, um, and there'll be fitness, hmm. and then there'll be family. I think these are the four aspects that I would set goals on. and that's how I'll and three four goals for each yeah and that's how I'll, I'll assess myself maybe not three four goals maybe what's relevant for that aspect but i'll but i will keep goals in each of these parts right i will not say only work goals are important right and i'll let my fitness goals go because i'm killing it at work and you won't put weightages on no none of that no no i i i haven't got there yet i haven't got there yet uh i know people do the weightages uh, but i think the weightages allow you to cheat This is not so important, so it's okay if I don't do it's it. It's a low weight, so I'll prioritize that, and I'll I'll get a hundred percent on that, and not get this. Um, I haven't decided, or I haven't, I I don't believe that any of these things have more weight than the. Do you write your goals, put them on the walls? Do you do any yeah. of that kind of yeah. stuff? Yeah. Tell, 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 yeah. tell. Yeah. So I uh, I I don't put them on the wall, hmm. but I put them in this notebook that I carry with me everywhere I go. Okay. It's in my bag, um, and I review it every month. Um, and and I also know that they're easy goals. Hmm. in the sense that i said something i can remember every day so if i'm messing up i know in my head i'm telling myself you are behind on this one right if it's a really complex goal like i have to do this and then this and then do that and then after that do this and then all of that you can't remember it right mm. but here i'm saying i want to work out five times a week it's saturday i've worked out three times this week if i don't do saturday and sunday i'm missing the goal interesting simple goal fantastic Arjun, this was fantastic. Thank you so much for coming on the podcast and sharing all of this with us. My pleasure. I I hope you enjoyed it as much as I did. It was brilliant. I'm so happy. Next year, let's do one more and let's see where we are. Let's see where we end up. Let's see where we end up. <laughs> Thank you so much. Thank you.